Welcome to the next video of the keys to the dinosaur kingdom. All right, so today we're going to talk about Deinonychus, an iconic dinosaur, and the dinosaur renaissance. So, here's Deinonychus. He's been on all sorts of adventures over the years. You'll see him on photographs on top of my Land Rover and in some of the other videos. So he's been a bit of a mascot. So he's been to the highlands of Lesotho and around Southern Africa. So well done to Dino, as we call him, the Dinozone mascot. Okay, so let's talk about this amazing dinosaur and the effect that it had on the whole study of dinosaurs and paleontology. Okay, everybody, say hello to Dino. Give us a wave. I'll give you a wave. <laughs> He's happy. Look, big toothy, big toothy grin looking at you from a Tuesday morning. Here at the Dino Zone. Okay, so without further ado, let's crack on and talk about dinosaurs and Deinonychus in particular. So, light, fast, and with big eyes. Big eyes that miss nothing. Deinonychus was a fearsome hunter, a predator of the Cretaceous. Although not quite as famous as Velociraptor, which was immortalized in Jurassic Park. It was perhaps more significant in paleontological circles for some good reasons. So before the discovery of Deinonychus, paleontologists thought that dinosaurs were slow-moving, dim-witted, stupid animals, laggards, and they were due for extinction. But then, a light-framed, agile creature with big, prey-spotting eyes and razor-sharp claws designed for slashing was discovered. So this turned the whole idea of dim-witted, slow-moving, stupid dinosaurs on its head. How could a fast-moving raptor designed for hunting with big eyes and a big brain to process all that data, how could that thing be a slow-witted laggard? <laughs> so people started to question this whole idea about dinosaurs being really dim-witted, stupid animals. So Deinonychus hunted on two legs and had a large head with sharp teeth. We've seen his teeth here. And they were set in powerful jaws and it had three large, sharp claws. Let me see if we can give you a better shot of that. Three large, sharp claws. Can you see that? Look at that. Oh, I've got to get this in the right place. Can you see those claws? I've got to get this in front of the lens. All right, so it had those three sharp claws on each hand, which took the place of fingers, while on the second toe of each foot comprised a 13 centimeter. So for those of you still working in inches, that's a five inch razor sharp claw, a scimitar designed for slashing. To balance out this fast moving creature, doing fast turns on the hunt, it had this long tail and it was stiffened with bony rods. Deinonychus was approximately three meters long, 10 feet, 1.5 meters, five feet high, and weighed up to 80 kilos. So that's approximately the weight of a human being. 175 pounds, if you will. He stood roughly 1.2 meters tall and was certainly tall enough to menace a human being. And that includes you. For all the kids watching it, that thing's going to tower over you, 1.2 meters tall. That might eat you for lunch, breakfast, dinner, maybe an afternoon snack. Although, they'd probably get a good meal out of that. It's not a T-Rex just gulping you down. This is a fairly small creature that probably would make a very, very good meal out of you. So lucky they're not around here anymore because <laughs> we could become snacks for these things. All right, so um, let's crack on. So before we go any further, if we haven't met, my name's Gerald Davey. I am the Dino Man and I head up the Dino Zone. The Dino Zone Dinosaur Park and Geo Center, where we bring paleontology and geology to life and show you all sorts of amazing stuff about ancient life 
prehistoric life fossils and of course being the geologist that I am I'm also into rocks and minerals and landscape formation and stratigraphy and geology as a whole so I'm completely and utterly fascinated by all of, all of this and I've been doing it for so many years <laughs> I am um, more years than I care to remember okay so that's who I am and welcome to the Dinozone and seeing you here why don't you give us a like give us a thumbs up Subscribe to this video and uh, I want to hear the notification bell ringing too. I can hear it going now. Ding! Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that. And if you, uh, if you don't do it now, I'm going to boss you around later in the video and uh, make you sign up then. We want to bring, as we said, dinosaurs to life. So we are going to give you the keys to the dinosaur kingdom. And I'm going to give you a secret code at the end, which when you punch that into the software, it's going to open up. An amazing world, a paleontological world for you to go and play in. So, so this is the third of 10 videos. So if you get all 10 codes and you put them into the software, that's going to open up the gate to the dinosaur kingdom and it's going to be a fantastic thing and then you can come in and play. All right, so we're looking forward to that. And in later videos, I'll tell you what you're going to get in it. But maybe a little teaser now. You're going to get all sorts of coloring in pages, puzzles, little videos. We're going to take you on a journey. We've got three levels. So we've got a bronze, we've got a silver, and we've got a gold. And in that, we're going to take you on a journey and we're going to turn you into budding paleontologists. We're going to turn you into dinosaur paleontologists. And we're going to teach you not only about dinosaurs, but expeditions and how to become a useful member on those expeditions. And, uh, well, I'm not going to get too involved in this right now, but uh, it's going to be a fantastic journey. All right, so we're looking forward to giving you the keys to the dinosaur kingdom and uh, getting you signed up in the Bone Diggers Club. All right, so if you do want to go and check out the Bone Diggers Club right now and pre-register for this, go to the website, the usual thing, HTTPS, no www, just punch in the dinosaur.com and you'll land up on the page. And, then, and on the top right, you'll see a red button that says the Bone Diggers Club. So go and sign up for that and then we'll give you notifications when we actually launch that. So we're looking forward to giving you exclusive access for a limited period into the Dinosaur Bone Diggers Club. All right, so make sure you stick around to the end and we will give you that secret code randomly generated by artificial intelligence so oh i'm going to give you a link below too you can download a pdf and then you can actually fill it in all those codes you hand hand write them and uh and the name of the video and the code and then at the end of it you've got a ready reference and you can stick that thing on the side of the fridge or somewhere all right good let's crack on with dinonychus and the dinosaur renaissance dino is getting lonely now listening to me chatting away there. <laughs> so, he's, I can hear him whispering to me saying, come on, get on with it now. Stop rambling on about the Bone Diggers Club and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I get it. So let's keep on going. So the first fossil of Deinonychus was discovered in Montana in 1931 by none other than Barna Brown, the man who also discovered T-Rex. 30 odd years later, John Ostrom, a very famous paleontologist, and you can read about him too on the Dinozone website. He discovered another skeleton of Deinonychus. And so this is quite an amazing story. It was probably the end of the day and they were all tired and they're walking home back to camp. And uh, it was late afternoon in August 1964, whilst tramping along a slope with his assistant, Grant E. Mayer, they came upon a sharp claw sticking out of an eroded mound. And this is what John Ostrom had to say, and I'm going to read this quote to you. We both nearly rolled down the slope in our rush to the spot. And I can imagine that excitement when they see that big claw sticking out. You know this claw we're talking about, those slashing claws? Closer look there. <laughs> so they saw this claw and they rushed down the hill and probably tumbling down the hill to get to the skeleton. And I think I would also rush down that hill in a tumble at the end of a day to go and see, see what was sticking out <laughs> of the earth. <laughs> so it's like kids getting into the toy box or the playpen. What a fantastic thing, eh? All right, so we're looking forward to you also becoming a paleontologist so you can also go and find bones of your own and write scientific papers about them. Okay, but let's stick with John Ostrom and Grant E. Mayer and that fantastic story. So they uncovered a powerful three-fingered grasping claw and then a foot. And after further research, Ostrom determined that the claws and feet belonged to a fleet-footed predatory dinosaur that lived 125 million years ago. He gave it the name Deinonychus, which means terrible claw and if you look at those claws they are pretty terrible you don't want to get anywhere near those things they're going to slash you and so that discovery led Ostrom to revise his thinking about how dinosaurs lived and died 
which led to the dinosaur renaissance, which is ongoing to this day. So if you don't know, the word renaissance means rebirth. Re and nascence, nascent, uh, natal, it's all those, it's all from the Latin. So the rebirth, so the rebirth of the study of dinosaurs, the dinosaur renaissance. Okay, so there's a little bit of extra information for you. So let's talk a little bit about John Ostrom because he was very, very influential in terms of driving the dinosaur renaissance along with his enthusiastic student Robert T. Backer. So Robert T. Backer you often see in some of those dinosaur movies, the documentaries. He's the guy with the big hat and the big beard. So he's an iconic guy. And we'll do another video on Backer at a later stage and maybe more on Ostrom. So see we're talking about the dinosaur renaissance. I cannot leave Ostrom and Backer out of this. Backer wrote a book called The um, Dinosaur Heresy. So that was quite a groundbreaking book. And uh, I'm going to leave Backer alone for the time being, and let's talk some more about Ostrom. All right, so, uh, so Ostrom proposed that dinosaurs were closer to big non-flying birds than they were to lizards. An idea that was first put forward 100 years by the English naturalist Thomas Henry Huxley. So initially there was a great deal of resistance to Ostrom's ideas about feathered dinosaurs until everyone had to eat their words when they found feathered dinosaurs in China. So Ostrom was born in New York and studied at Union College and then he first thought he was going to become a doctor but then he read a book on evolution and he was converted and he became a paleontologist studying at Columbia University. And without getting too much into his academic credentials, he ultimately became professor and curator emeritus of vertebrate paleontology at the Peabody Museum of Natural History. So if any of you have watched my or read my blog posts, oh, and watched my video on the Bone Wars, it was Othniel Charles Marsh who got his uncle to stump up the money for the Peabody Museum. So Marsh was one of the protagonists, one of the scallywags who fought the Bone Wars with, who was that other nutcase, Edward Drinker Cope. <laughs> I wouldn't say nutcase. They named more dinosaurs than anybody else put together. But um, Peabody is a famous place. And so Ostrom became the curator of the Peabody. All right, so he was on holy ground. Not only did Ostrom discover warm-blooded Deinonychus, or he was the first to describe it, I know Barnum Brown found another specimen earlier on, but he also revised the classification of the Harlem Archaeopteryx. So you might or might not know, but Archaeopteryx is a feathered, it's like a proto-bird, very, very famous. I think there are only three fossils in the world found in Europe, in Germany mostly, if I remember correctly, and uh, which supported the theory that birds evolved from dinosaurs. Then he studied hadrosaur trackways, those are those duck-billed dinosaurs. And he came to the conclusion they were sociable creatures because there were lots and lots of trackways of, of hadrosaurs. So obviously they were herd animals and they all traveled around or walked around or moved around together. All right, so groundbreaking ideas. So with the idea that dinosaurs were stupid laggards due for extinction, Ostrom and his protege, his student, back had turned all those ideas on their head. But it was heresy absolute heresy back in the day. But when he died in 2005, his theories had been vindicated. So hats off to John Ostrom and his great science, his revolutionary thinking, and his courage to believe in his convictions. Okay, so that's a little video done and dusted on the dinosaur renaissance and the two men who essentially drove it, John Ostrom and Robert T. Backer. So we'll try and do another video on Backer. Maybe that's gonna be the next one. Dino has had fun. He was paying attention, hearing about his ancestors, so he's delighted. So um, if you want one of these, you can come to the Dino Zone and buy one. They're schleich. They're made by the best, in my opinion, dinosaur manufacturers in the world. They articulate. They're quite lifelike. They've got little beady eyes. Look at that. Oh, he's got big beady eyes, made for hunting. And uh, those slashing claws, eh? How wonderful is that? Okay, so there's not much left for me to do now, but to say please will you like this video, please will you share this video, please will you subscribe to the Dino Zone, please will you hit the notification button, ding, okay, thank you, because the algorithm doesn't always present you with the next video, so if you hit the notification button, it will. 
visit us at the Dino Zone, join our Facebook page, join our Facebook group. We're just trying to build a fantastic community and it would be lovely for you to be part of it. Of course, if you want to pre-register for the Dino Zone Bone Diggers Club, click on that button on the top right of the Dino Zone website, dinozone.com, and uh, pre-register as we try and roll this thing out sooner rather than later. As you can imagine, it's a huge amount of work, but if you've watched the end of this video, you're going to get this code now, and that's going to give you free access to the first part of the Bone Diggers Club. Okay. Sorry, there might be some noise outside. We've got a howling gale blowing. It's what we call a berg wind, like the French Mistral or the ferns. That's hot. I think it's catabatic winds descending from the mountains down to the coast. <laughs> and uh, they dry out and they become really gusty and it blows all the leaves off the trees and scatters everything everywhere all right so if there's a bit of noise there my apologies oh on another thing if you also go to the dinozone website at the bottom of the of every page we've got a link and you can download the coloring in book we had this lovely artist and she put together she illustrated children's books and there are some really look they're a little bit stylized but there's some fantastic dinosaurs in action in fact there's a whole herd of dinonychuses Dinonychi, Dinonychuses on the hunt. Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So go and download that coloring in book and there'll be hours and hours of coloring fun. So that's available there on the Dinozone website. All right, so the last thing for me to do now is to give you the third key in these in the series, which gets you access to the Dinozone Dinosaur Kingdom. Okay, so that number is, and I have to look down and read it now, 864-2193. 864-2193. Okay, so write that down. Don't lose it. Get a piece of paper. You're going to get all 10 codes in it. Otherwise, you can download the PDF, which I've given you the link to. And um, we're looking forward to you entering that and having you on board at the Bone Diggers Club when you sign up. Because the keys to the Dinosaur Kingdom gives you free access to the early days of the Bone Diggers Club. Okay, wonderful stuff. It's been fantastic having you along. As we've already said, please subscribe. Please like, please share. And please hit the notification button. Okay, I'm out of here. You take care. I'll see you on the next one. Look after yourselves. Bye.